If you are writing Python workflows in ArcGIS Pro, and if you want an efficient way to organize, reuse, and share those scripts, then it would be well worth taking a look at ArcGIS Notebooks. Uh, if you've used the Python window in ArcGIS Pro, you've likely seen how you can write code to interact with your data and see the results immediately. And a Python notebook works in a similar way, but is a more comprehensive environment for Python scripting. So to create a notebook, you can open a new notebook from the analysis ribbon. This will create the notebook in the project folder. Alternatively, you can create them through the catalog window, similar to creating any other data set, such as a geodatabase. So let's have a look at an example. Once we're in the notebook environment, we can write Python code just as we would in the Python window. So to start this script, we need to import ArcPy if we want to use the geoprocessing and other pro tools. Next, I'm gonna set some variables with data from my project that we're going to process. Notebooks are really good for drag and drop. So I wanna set the workspace environment for the code. I can just drag this geodatabase from the catalog window. That then generates the code for that dataset. Likewise, we can drag layers from the contents pane. That layer is then referenced in our code, saves a bunch of time and avoids typos. So I've got my data that I'm going to use in my script, an output name for the feature class I intend to create later, and we are counting line features to see how many we are going to process and print that out. All that is specified in this first cell because notebooks are made up of cells and we can add further cells through the insert icon. Cells break up the code into manageable chunks. In this new cell, I wish to add a geoprocessing tool, and in the same way we can drag data sets into the code, we can also drag geoprocessing tools direct from the dialog as well. If I remove the brackets and select the shift and tab keys, I'll get the tool documentation to see what parameters we need. Alternatively, I can type ArcPy and the library, SA for spatial analysis uh, in this case, and hit the tab key and all the available tools in this package are shown. Type a couple of letters to filter further and I can select the tool. Having code in cells like this allows us, if we wish, to execute certain portions of the code independently. This feature makes it much easier to test and debug code. So for example, if I want to count the number of features in this layer without running the geoprocessing tools, which are in a different cell, I can just highlight the first cell and run, and only this cell is executed, and we get the results listed here. When we insert a new cell, it has the default type of code to accept our Python script, but we can also specify to have a markdown cell, which is a markup language. This is for documenting our code to explain and capture ideas. This is perhaps if we want to go beyond regular code commenting. This is particularly useful if we want to share code with others. With a markdown cell, there is no formatting toolbar in a notebook that we would have in something like Word, things like buttons for bold or options to make a heading. So the markdown language is more like HTML. And indeed, we can use HTML in a notebook. So if we want to make something bold, we could use the HTML bold tag, or we can use the markdown tag of two stars to get the same result. If we want a heading, we use a hash. Use more than one hash to increasingly uh, get minor headings. We can get a bullet list by putting a dash before the text. And if I want to add an image, I can use the IMG HTML or markdown tag 
referencing a web URL. So we can document the script any way we want. You just need to look up the required tags if you're not familiar with them. You'll soon get to know the main ones. When the script is run, we get the formatted text with those formatting tags hidden. And you can always go back and edit the cell further if you want. Cells can be repositioned using the arrow keys. So I'll move this cell to the top. Now I can run all the code. This code will convert lines to points and then run a point spline interpolation to generate a raster grid. And if we want to stop the execution of the script at any time, we can hit the interrupt button. This is useful if you realize there is something wrong with the code and you don't need to wait for it to complete or hit an error. So I've got my interpolator raster and that is it. I have my code in the notebook and sometime in the future, I can just change the data set variables if I need to and reuse this code. And notebooks can be renamed. There are single files, so it can be easily moved around and shared. And that's a brief introduction to notebooks in ArcGIS Pro.